Our PLC presentation today focuses on the Benchmark Literacy Phonics Program and its effect on the Phonological Awareness Skills Attestment Score that kindergarten students take at the end of each school year. Just a brief introduction to our study today. We did this study because kindergarten students are not demonstrating proficiency on their end of the year past test, past test scores. This presentation will give you different research strategies that you can use to improve your early phonics instruction to use with your kindergarten and first grade students. The Benchmark Literacy Phonics Program will be implemented in all kindergarten classrooms and used to fidelity. So the idea behind this is that our Benchmark Literacy Phonics Program will teach our kindergarten students all the phonics skills that they need to be ready for first grade and to be good early readers. This presentation will also analyze the impact of the Benchmark Literacy Phonics Program and their kindergarten pass test scores. So it will compare the effectiveness of the program to their test scores at the end of the year. This presentation will work towards gaining proficiency on kindergarten common core phonics standards. So the Benchmark Literacy Phonics Program is common core aligned and teaches all the skills necessary for the students to pass the end of the year past assessment. The purpose of our study today is to increase the proficiency of kindergarten common core phonics standards. So we're finding that our kindergarten students are not demonstrating proficiency on their phonics standards and therefore are not demonstrating proficiency early reading. The goal of this study is also to teach students good reading strategies. So not only phonics skills, but phonics skills that they need in order to become good readers. The presentation will guide our students to become independent readers. So not only teach them the phonics skills that we've been talking about, but also teach them to read independently and to use those phonics skills without teacher prompting. This presentation will determine the effectiveness of the Benchmark Literacy Phonics Program and how it affects our students on the end of the year assessments. I conducted three literature reviews. The first one was titled Phonics Instruction and Early Reading. So in this article, it focused on a push towards establishing synthetic phonics. So what synthetic phonics is, is students, got, students breaking down each word into individual sounds. So for example, if they're reading the word cat, they would break it down such as cat, rather than just recognizing the word is cat, they break it down into those individual sounds. So there's been a big push recently towards guiding students towards synthetic phonics as their primary source of reading instruction in kindergarten. Teachers are arguing that there's more to reading than just phonics. So we're finding that our students may have good phonics skills, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they're good readers. They don't have the comprehension skills that are necessary to be good readers, and they don't have the fluency that's necessary to be a good reader. Just because they're good at their phonics skills doesn't mean necessarily that they're reading proficient. There's a lack of funding for our at-risk students. So our students who are falling behind, they need special programs and they need special um, RTI teachers and things like that that can help them push forward. But there's a lack of funding for that in our schools. So our at-risk students are not being successful because they're not getting the necessary programs that they need to push forward. Um, a use of variety of methods to teach decoding. So similar to math, our students are all wired differently. They don't all learn in one way. We need a variety of strategies to teach our students to decode so that they can be successful. A fact that I found really interesting was that 70% of our teachers say that phonics skills are of high importance in early reading. So that's 70%. That's a huge chunk of our teachers who thinks that phonics skills are the most important things that we teach in early reading, and I agree with that. Phonics can negatively affect comprehension. So if our students are focus, constantly focusing on trying to read the word and breaking the word down into different sounds, they're never gonna understand what they read because all their time is spent on decoding rather than comprehending. The second literature review that I read about was called Phonics, A Place in the Literacy Story. And this article was focused on phonics being important for writing and spelling, but not so important for reading. So phonics should be focused more towards writing and spelling. We shouldn't be telling our students that phonics makes them good readers. We should be telling them that phonics makes them good writers and good spellers, but reading should be more focused on an analytic approach. This article also was about understanding that text requires more than just decoding. It also requires using past experiences, knowledge of language, predictions, and questioning. So whenever we're reading, it's more than just decoding, and we talked about this a little earlier. 
Students also need to learn to use some comprehension strategies like gaining on their past experiences, using their knowledge of their language, and asking themselves questions. We also talked about this a little bit earlier, synthetic versus analytic phonics. So synthetic phonics focuses on students just being able to automatically read a word. Like they can, you can hold up the word cat and they automatically know that the word is cat. Analytic phonics focuses on students being able to sound out the word. So they can sound out each individual phoneme such as cat and finding out that the word is cat. So the article talked about the difference between the two and which is more beneficial for our kindergarten phonics skills. Meaning, grammar, and letter sound relationships are the three big pushes in phonics instruction. An overemphasis in any of, any of the three of these can be ineffective for our students, so we need a good balance between all three of them, meaning, grammar, and letter sound relationships. The last of my literature review articles was called Kindergarten Phonics Instruction. It focused on a lot of different effective strategies when teaching phonics. So as we know, our kindergarten students have very short attention spans and they need a lot of hands-on approach. So it said that the most effective strategies for our students are things like word games and singing songs and doing movements and different scaffolding strategies, which is what I use a lot in my kindergarten classroom and a lot of what our Benchmark Literacy Phonics program uses. Active exploration is really important when teaching letter names, letter sounds, and letter formation. So students need to be using their hands. They need to be manipulating things. They don't just need to be given direct instruction when teaching these skills. They really need to be active when exploring it. The ending outcome, our most big skills that the students need to know at the end of kindergarten, is blending letters, segmenting words, isolating sounds, letter sound correspondence, decoding text, and reading and writing words. Our supporting skills at the end of kindergarten are rhyming and sight words. So the Benchmark Literacy Phonics Program combines all of these things to get our students ready for first grade. Here are the three references to those three articles if you're interested in any additional professional reading. So now to get into the meat of our presentation. Our research question says, what effect does the Benchmark Literacy Phonics Program, a program that reinforces reading fundamentals, have on kindergarten phonological awareness skills assessment scores? And you'll often hear me call that the past, past test. So the justification of the research method. 51% of our students are not ready for kindergarten. So when we give the Brigantz test at the very beginning of kindergarten before our, our students ever come to school, what we're finding is that 51% of Kentucky students are not ready for kindergarten. And that number happens to be even higher at my school. My students are struggling to read due to a lack of phonics skills. So I'm noticing when my students go to first grade, they're not becoming fluent readers because they have the lack of phonics skills that they didn't enter kindergarten with. The Benchmark Literacy Phonics Program reinforces reading fundamentals. So the goal of the Benchmark Literacy Phonics Program is to catch our students up for what they're not coming to kindergarten with. And lastly, to determine the effect of the Benchmark Literacy Phonics Program on our past test scores. So we're trying to see if throughout teaching this program through the whole year, if we're seeing good results at the end of the year on their past test. So our sampling and participants. We had 21 kindergarten students who are ranging from ages five and six, which included 12 boys and nine girls. Two of these students had IEPs for speech and language. One of these students was in spe the special education program. Six of these students were ESL, st ESL students who are speaking English as their second language. And three of these students are receiving RTI for reading and math. So now into the methodology section. These are the instruments that we're using. This is just kind of a broad overview of each instrument. So the first one is our Benchmark Literacy Phonics Program, and it will be used at each grade level in all kindergarten classrooms to teach phonics skills. The weekly phonics quick check will be done at the end of the week, and it will assess the week's letter, letter sound, sight word, and phonological skill. There will be a weekly decodable text, which will focus on the week's letter, a monthly letter identification assessment, which is totally separate from the Benchmark Literacy Phonics program, but ties into the skills that it teaches. And the end of the year past assessment. So this is a picture of the Benchmark Literacy Phonics program and all the different materials that it contains. Um, you can see it has, a, it has all kinds of different materials that comes with it. It teaches kindergarten phonics skills, which includes phonological awareness, letter discrimination and identification, short vowels, consonants, sight words, and spelling. 
So just to give you kind of an example, each week the Benchmark Literacy Phonics Program introduces one letter and its letter sound to go with it. It introduces three sight words and at the end of the year the students can identify 46 sight words. It teaches three CBC words and one phonics skill each week. All skills are assessed at the end of each week. So this is a picture of the uppercase letter identification assessment. This is done monthly to test letter identification. So I use this in the form of a data folder. I use one of those manila folders that opens like this and I put the uppercase letters on one side and lowercase letters on the other side. I do this about once a month and I just point to the letter and ask the students to identify each one of them. If they get them correct, I use a pencil to put a check mark next to each one and at the end I count how many they got correct. I date it down here at the bottom and then I draw a box around how many of the students get correct and then I allow the students to color in their number of correct letters. So this really allows the students to see very visually how many letters that they have gotten correct and it also allows them to see their growth over time. It's a really good way for students to take responsibility of their own learning and I often hear my students say things like, Miss Lunsford, look how much I know, look how much I know which I in turn say, no, look how much you grew and look how many letters you know so that the students are really getting that vocabulary and really know what kind of data they're looking at. This measures the effectiveness of the Benchmark Literacy Phonics Program. So like I said, this does not directly come with the program, but it does, affect, it does measure the effectiveness of it teaching the letter each week. So this is an example of one page of the past assessment. This is just two of the skills. It's just a little snippet. This assesses all kindergarten phonological awareness skills. So all the common core standards that focus around phonics are assessed in this assessment. At Northern, we administer this at the end of each year. You can use it a lot of different ways. I've seen schools that do it three times every year, that do it once in the middle, once at the beginning, and once at the end to see growth over time. I've seen schools that only use this at the beginning of first grade. So I've seen it used in many different ways. At Northern, we use it just at the end of the year. It can be reassessed in first grade if skills were not mastered. So this is kind of how we use it. If there are skills that the kindergartners leave our classroom not mastering, our first grade teachers will reassess them at the beginning of the year, their year and at the end of their year to see if the students can master it by then. This travels with the students in their cumulative folder from kindergarten to first grade. So like I said, our, our first grade teachers are able to get a hold of this at the beginning of the year and immediately see where their students are in phonics. So these are two quick examples. This is the decodable text that the students have weekly, and this focuses on the letter that they are also learning in the Benchmark Literacy Phonics program that week. So for example, if we focus on letter P this week, and last week was letter O, POP would be a good book for them to read because it hits on both those skills. It grows and grows, and by the end, the book incorporates all the letters that they've learned throughout the entire year. Students should be able to read these independently, so I often have this as one of my phonics centers. This is an example of the phonics quick check that comes with the benchmark program. This should be done at the end of each week, and it's just a very, very, very quick informal assessment to see how your students are doing each week. I find that this is a really good way to see, to catch our students before they get really far behind. So if our students are not mastering these each week, we know immediately rather than getting nine weeks in and our students are then way too far behind to catch up. So this is an overview of each of the things that we've talked about and when they should be completed. The Benchmark Literacy Phonics Program is a whole group tier one program that's completed 20 minutes daily. It reinforces all of our kindergarten phonics skills and provides our students with the necessary early reading that they need for first grade. The letter of identification assessment that I used in the form of a data folder is completed once a month. I usually try to do this at the end of the month. Used to assess effectiveness of the Benchmark Literacy Phonics program and also used in the form of a data folder like we talked about. The, the PASS test, the Phonological Awareness Skills Test, is completed at the end of each school year. And like I said, it can be used in different ways. It assesses all kindergarten phonics standards that are taught in the Benchmark Literacy Phonics program and it travels with the students to first grade in their cumulative folder. The decodable text, there's one each week and it is used to reinforce the weekly phonics skills. And the phonics quick checks are also completed once a week and they're used to assess the weekly phonics skills as well. 
So here's a couple pie graphs to show you some different data that we got from our last year's past test scores. So this pie graph shows just some baseline data. So this is just a proficiency report of students who were proficient and students who were not proficient. So you can see the dark purple is the percent of students who were proficient. The light purple is the percent of students who were not proficient. So in my class last year, I have 21 students, 62% of them were proficient and 38 of them were not. So if we break that down into some numbers, we can see that the proficients, there were 13 out of 21 students who were proficient and eight out of 21 students who were not proficient. Now the proficiency goal was 70%. So for students to reach proficiency, they had to achieve a 70% or greater. This is the level that the students were working at upon exiting kindergarten. So entering first grade, this is a snapshot of what my class would have looked like according to baseline data. A couple reasons why I would assume that my students were, a big chunk of my students were not proficient, 38%, would be that most of these were my ESL students. My three RTI students were included in this 38%. And whenever I dig in deeper to the skills, I found some holes in the Benchmark Literacy Phonics program that these skills were not taught. So this graph shows by, um, this one shows the number of students misconception by skill. So you can see there are 14 questions on the past assessment and each question is tied to a different skill. So this one, this shows the number of students who had the question incorrect. So for example, on question one, there were three students who got that question incorrect. On question two, there were five students who got that incorrect and so on. So this shows the skills that were tied to each question. So question one, the skill was concept of a spoken word. Question two was rhyming recognition and so on. The ones that are highlighted in purple here were the three skills that were most missed. And if we flip back to this slide, you can see question 13 was missed by 19 students. Question 12 was missed by 10 students and question six was missed by 10 students. So those were the most missed skills. And that's also where I found the holes in the Benchmark Literacy Phonics program. So gap groups are really big at Northern. Our gap groups really struggle. So one of the things that I chose to focus on was digging deeper into my percent of proficiency by gap group. One of the gap groups that I focused on was race. So my dark purple is my African American students. So 38% of my African American students were proficient on the past test. The lighter purple is my Caucasian students, which was the largest portion. 46% of my Caucasian students were proficient on the past assessment. And the middle was my Hispanic students. You can see that's the smallest chunk. 15% of my Hispanic students were successful on the past assessment. So as you can see, my Caucasian students were most successful, then my African American students, and lastly was my Caucasian students. So if we break this down into numbers, my African American students, five out of eight of them were proficient. My Caucasian students, six out of eight of them were proficient and my Hispanic students, two out of five were proficient. So because of this data, I chose to dig a little deeper into my ESL students because clearly they're the ones that are suffering on our past, past test scores. So for my last data analysis, we have ESL students versus non-ESL students. So this dark chunk right here at 15% is my ESL students. So 15, only 15% 15 of my ESL students are proficient on the past assessment and 84% of my non-ESL students are proficient on the past assessment. So you can see that our ESL students are really struggling on these phonics skills. If we break this down into numbers, our ESL students, only two out of the six were proficient, and our non-ESL students, 12 of the 15 were proficient. The most missed skills by our ESL students, because that's definitely useful knowledge for us to know, was the deletion of final sounds, deletion of first sounds in a consonant blend, and the phoneme substitution. So hopefully you found some useful information in our PLC today that you can use to help your students when using the Benchmark Literacy Phonics program and teaching the past assessment.